Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the, uh, the last um, session in the Together Room. Uh, we have Joanna, and she'll be talking about uh, contributing to Python open source infrastructure and project. And yeah, it's basically, it's on the slides on the screen. But I just have uh, three announcements to make before we start. Um, one of the announcements are that uh, T-shirts will be handed out after the lightning talks. Um, another one is if you have a lightning talk, is it possible to leave your um, ASAP at the end of the talk and be in um, the orange room? And then there's another one is if you're a panelist tomorrow, uh, for tomorrow's uh, panel discussion, uh, you, is, you're supposed to meet with um, the organizers after uh, the lightning talks. I think that's all. And um, yeah, so I think we'll start, uh, Jana. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, so we're going to talk about contributing to Python open source infrastructure. Why now? Especially why now more than before? Um, about me, my name is Joanna Nanjeche. I'm a software engineer uh, by profession. and. Um, I've worked for close to three years, and uh, I'm a Rails Girls Summer of Code alumni. Uh, Rails Girls Summer of Code is a community where we, they encourage women to contribute to open source. And uh, I was lucky to be one of the scholars last year, this year, till September. I'm all, um, and currently, I'm an aeronautical engineering student at the East Africa School of Aviation. So that's my handle. Okay, so what is open source software? Um, it's software that you can get, modify it, and use it without anyone taking you to court. Okay, simply, in layman's language. Um, no one will take you to court for using it. So what it's not, it's not free. Uh, whenever you talk about open source, everyone thinks, oh, they're talking about free software. There's a joke somebody used to say that when Windows releases something, somebody's like, ah, oh, another license. And when Linux releases something, somebody, somebody's like, oh, free stuff again. So open source is not necessarily free, and not necessarily that it doesn't have licenses. It has licenses involved. So there are very many good reasons to contribute to open source. Um, just by show of hands, how many of us have contributed to open source before? Oh, five. Yeah, so one, some people contribute because they want to improve their skills and then get a platform to show off their skills because uh, very many developers believe open source is like a stage. You know, like a musician, they give you a stage uh, to dance and do your song. So many developers think, um, Open source gives you a stage, which is actually true. And some think they actually contribute for fame. How many of you do that? The five. Yeah, I had that reason, like, to be famous. And I have, I have a link to a patch, you know. It also sounds good, but it's just one of the reasons, again. So, but we need to contribute to open source, especially because we are using and building on top of it. Uh, I know, uh, how many of us you do Python? Have used Python? Django? Yeah, and there are five open source contributors. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so we need to contribute to open source because the mere fact that we actually use and are building on top of it. So research shows that most projects are survived by around two people, Python projects inclusive. Like survived. Yeah, you may have a couple of people contributing, but they're like two, usually like two dedicated people. Have you ever seen somebody open a PR and after some time it's like, I have a lot of stuff to do, I want a PR takeover? I mean, in your mind, what do you think? As in, you open a PR and you actually never complete it. Yeah, so that's the current state of the art. Two people um, that are surviving open source projects projects that are being used by big companies and all of you are actually using them. And thousands don't even care if it gets better. Actually, most people 
and companies just think open source, it just happens. Yeah, you don't need to maintain it or do anything, it just happens. So they are building palaces on top of platforms that will crumble if we actually don't care about it. Python inclusive. You guys, most of you are doing stuff in Django, and some of you don't care whether maybe the security improves or not. I don't know whether you've heard of the Ruby story. There was a time rubygems.org was, they hacked the server, so the community had to rebuild the server from scratch. So imagine you are in the Ruby community. Ruby and gems, you know gems is a very central point in Ruby. And imagine uh, at some point in time, they are just rebuilding that server. So what happened is that it was a wake up call that time. Very many Ruby developers took time off their work to try and fix the emergency that had fallen. So as a Python community, I do not think you want, you want us to, you want to reach that level, yeah? Like you wait when Django has gotten this issue and you can't work, has been all compromised and you're running like 10 projects on Django. Can you imagine for a second what would happen? A lot, that's a big downtime for such a project if you're relying on it. So let's not wait for that time to take time off our jobs and begin hacking, I think we better begin like right now, like yesterday, to begin contributing to it. Uh, so how do you get involved? One, you don't need to be a programmer to get involved in open source. Before I made my first PR, I used to think, whenever you talk of open source, it's probably code. One, because maybe I may not look cool if I'm not pushing code, but also it was a mindset I didn't know actually you can do documentation. You can, there are very many projects, there are very many smart people that can code, but they don't actually know how to document, or they hate it. Yeah, I hate it, but, so somebody else should do that. And yeah, there are also actual patches we need to do. So, there are like a few ways, a couple of ways you can contribute. One, by suggesting a feature. Most times, you can suggest a feature for a product you're not using. So if you're using Python, you are in the best position to suggest a, py a Python feature, yeah? To, to suggest a feature that will improve Django or any, anything. Or you could contribute by solving existing bugs. Um, the maintainers of different Python projects, they have a whole issue log. They are called tasks. If you go on, if you visit their GitHub accounts, they have bugs usually there. If you find you can't suggest anything, you can pick up one of them and solve it. At the end of the day, you're bettering the community and actually helping yourself because you use this, you're using these tools in all your projects. And you could also report a bug, or you could actually do document the Python infrastructure. Like I said, Documentation gets better. Some of you uh, work better with documentation. Most developers, they're actually forced to document. Like, they just know um, code should be, things should be documented, but they're actually not talented. But it's happening because the right people are actually not showing up. The right people are not willing to actually document these projects. So, like I said, everyone can. So what do you need? to begin contributing to Python infrastructure. One, you just need a passion to better the infrastructure. If you're, if you're happy of Python, I believe you, you guys came for Python because, PyCon because you, at some point you use Python or you're passionate about Python or something close to that. So you just need that passion to better the tool you actually use that tool you actually gain from, and two, skill, but also you don't need, you, you, you need to give room to learn new skills, uh, especially ladies. Uh, I had a friend who told me, Joanne, I want to be like you. I need like two, and two more years to be able to contribute to open source. You just need a little skill, but don't expect, like you'll never be perfect. 
to begin to make your first PR, pull request to staff, and be nice and tolerant. If you're a maintainer, in other words, if you if you, you, you're maintaining an open source infrastructure. I've seen people mentoring PyPy and other projects, PyPy and other PyPy projects. So if you're a maintainer, be nice, be welcoming, to especially first-time first -time contributors. We know that you are smart, but maintainers have a reputation of not being as nice and welcoming to especially first-time contributors. So you need to be nice. And if you are a contributor, be tolerant. Yeah, those things are there. Like it's for a fact that people who, who've never believed they're first timers and they just, they just have no reason for anyone not doing it right, even if it was your first time. So when you, when you encounter such a community, I usually, call, I usually console myself. I tell myself, I remind myself of the, the cause, like, why am I doing this? And yeah, find a way, just find a way of making it work. Yeah, be tolerant. Then they are yourself. Uh, in relation to skills, uh, some people think they're just not good enough. Uh, some people are, some tools are actually written in C. I know people who just, see, who just fear C. Uh, they just hate it. And uh, they think Python is fair, but it's equally the same. But these communities, the Python community, has a lot of experts. And uh, they can help you. You just need to show your interest that you want to contribute and somebody maintaining that tool or somebody in that community will help you. So what Python infrastructure is available? Python itself is open source, Django, Flask, request, and then, yeah, some of those are Python infrastructure, but then others are actually Python projects, like Qt Browser, um, if you've used Vim, you probably will appreciate Qt Browser. It's just a, a, a project. Keyboard based browser based on PyKT5. I've uh, personally contributed to it. It's really Python. And uh, the, the maintainer is good. Has a way of separating first time bugs and actually helps you even in able, being able to achieve your first peer. So if you're a student and you fear, actually fear, I'd recommend Qt Browser because I've personally worked with the maintainer. He's so welcoming. I'm not saying it's the only project that has good, a good mentor. I can't talk for others. Just I've, I've worked with that guy, so I know he's welcoming to new beginners. OpenStack has services that are actually Python-based, very many projects. Yeah, so you could reach one of their mentors in IRC uh, f to ask how you could begin, you know, um, making a small contribution and bettering the services they run. Debian also has projects, especially in the category of uh, reproducible builds. I know of Diphoscope. If you go to Debian, Diphoscope, yeah, it's Python, and other projects in there that I may not have, have used before or contributed to. So there are also other paid opportunities to actually contribute to open source. For some of you that are like, oh, what do I gain? Yeah, but if you're a student, again, the motivation should not be money, but improving the tools that you actually use. So there's Rose Girl Summer of Code, if you're a lady. Uh, in the month of April, they call for applications, so you can apply and be part. Uh, they guide you, especially if you're first time a first-time contributor or you want to learn, it's a bit competitive, but I know you can get there. Then Google Summer of Code is also an opportunity to make a patch to some of the selected projects from different organizations and outreach for underrepresented groups, similar to Google Summer of Code, but especially for underrepresented. So submitting a patch. Depend, how do you submit a patch? Depending on the community, but standard is you open a PR, you open a pull request through Git because I know most of them host, most of the, most of the tools are hosted on GitHub or Bitbucket, so the normal standard is open, you open a pull request, but different organizations and projects suggest 
uh, different ways of submitting a contribution. Sometimes it's you attach it to an email. Again, don't be shy. Just interact with the community and get to know the right way to do that. So remember, if you are a contributor, there is no small contribution. Every contribution is important. Uh, even if you just wrote a test, it's also important to the project. And people are, and the community is waiting for that small change that you call small, but it's significant. And maintainers ought to remember that contributors are human. Uh, somebody stressed, uh, human means, unlike a computer, humans have emotions. So when you're reviewing the code, just take some time and think, I'm actually reaching out to a human with emotions and can respond. Think about it. He's doing, okay, I would say he's not doing you a favor, but he's helping you, you know. It's your project and he's trying to help you better it. So when you're reviewing him or her, review them with grace. Yeah, and uh, say thank you after the merge. Uh, it's just not obvious that somebody wakes up and sends you a patch anyway and invests time to, to do something on your project. So thank you. Say thank you after a merge. The danger with the Python infrastructure is it depends on distrib contributions. Contributions from people. And whenever you think, okay, for example, whenever you think that he's the one maintaining a project, he's also thinking somebody else is. And yet, the Python infrastructure and the tools we use actually depend on us. So if we are, we are not making, uh, doing pull requests to solve and improve them, then with time, they're going to be incompetent, and yet we are building on top of them. So we need to hack for Python. Thank you. Really a question, just a comment here, or maybe a suggestion. Because uh, I heard you said that uh, we don't care, some of us that haven't yet gotten to uh, contribute. I think <coughs> it's a bit harsh. I think that uh, maybe we should say to those who haven't gotten there yet, try to hurry. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, um, any other questions? Yeah, I just don't know anything about the process. So, so now I want to <laughs> help out with Qt Browser, or I can't remember what it was called. Um, how, what do I do? Where do I go uh, to start this process? Oh, uh, particularly Qt Browser? Well, yeah. Oh, um, cute, cute browser has ARC channels. If you can find time, you can, we will get in touch and uh, I give you the channel name. Unfortunately, I couldn't share it. Uh, so you can get in the community, but I recommend you reach the mentor first, maybe through email, so that uh, if you're afraid, he, you could talk out with him before. But we also recommend um, having discussions in the community, like um, where everyone is, yeah. So remind me, I'll share with you the channel, IRSC channel, yeah. Or you can just go to the Qt browser, <laughs> again, I'll share the Qt browser URL. You find bugs and just comment on the bug, like kindly assign me to this bug, and he'll put a tag like work in progress so that you are the only one working on it. Um, I believe you said you're currently a student, but yes. do you have any suggestions for how you can convince, for how people can convince their organizations to um, let them spend time contributing to open source projects? Um, 
Um, your bosses. Um, I think if uh, if you you tell them again about the importance of the tools they are using, because every organization uses some sort of tools. So the best way to reach them is tell them that the tools you're actually using are open source projects. They're built by somebody. So if we don't improve them, something will happen someday. And like the Ruby Gems, I told you about Ruby Games. It was compromised, and they rebuilt the server from. So imagine you were running a Rails or Ruby project, and a company actually was running on Ruby. So the best thing to, tell, to talk to them about is the importance of contributing, because it's bettering the tools they are using. But if they don't, if you don't convince them that way, they won't find need. Any other questions? And there's just a, a comment on that question you had about the pull request. Um, there's something that happens in October called Hacktoberfest by DigitalOcean. I think it's on their website. And then yeah, there's like a whole bunch of uh, projects on GitHub that has that, um, the label um, Hacktoberfest. So if you like get four pull requests, they give you like a free t-shirt and a couple of sweet, uh, stickers and stuff. Yeah, so it's a cool thing to check out. Thank you. OK, thank you, Jana. Uh, thanks. Um, just a couple of announcements. Um, everyone, thanks for attending. Uh, thanks, Jana.